Yeah, good morning students. Uh, this is KV Ramesh, Anthropology faculty and welcome to Vimarsha IAS Academy. So today I am going to discuss about one of the myth in paleoanthropology. So one of the myth in paleoanthropology and second thing, so from this video you will come to know that how many species that present in our genus Homo. So species in our Homo genus. So why because our syllabus for UPSC for say generally when it comes to the paleoanthropology the study about evolution of human beings. So only few fossil men only they are discussing. So hardly what fossils they discussed means the first one Australopithecians. So Australopithecians second one Homo habilis and Homo erectus and Homo neanderthals and Homo sapiens sapiens and there is intermediate fossils like Rhodesian man or Heidelbergensis. So these are all the five to six fossils only everybody they are talking when it comes to the uh, human evolution. So but <coughs> There are more than 15 fossils were excavated till now and how these fossils were related to each other and what are all the myth in our human evolutionary, uh, evolutionary process till now we are believing that issues we are going to discuss. So the first one, so by seeing this image, do you identify any flaw? So everywhere the human evolution portrayed in this manner. So this kind of representation we call as linear evolution. So linear evolution. Linear evolution means so the Dryopithecus here we can see that. So Dryopithecus. So these are all the Dryopithecus. So Dryopithecus, so the fossil of Dryopithecus led into, so this kind of Australopithecus and Australopithecus, the fossils led into Homo habilis and Homo habilis are finally rose into Homo erectus and Homo erectus are rise into Neanderthals and these near, from this Neanderthals modern Homo sapiens. So this is the diagrammatic representation. Dryopithecus, Dryopithecus are evolved into Australopithecus, Australopithecus evolved into Homo habilis and Homo habilis evolved into Homo erectus, Homo erectus evolved into Neanderthals from this Neanderthals to Homo sapiens. That means these are all the ancestor species of modern Homo sapiens. So this is somewhat of truth only. So that means the same species at a different point of time which undergone and finally led into the single species called Homo sapiens. But the reality is the time period of Dryopithecus it is a separate genus. So this Dryopithecus had multiple species. We didn't know exactly which is species under the, geno, uh, under the genus of Dryopithecus led into evolution of Australopithecus. And Australopithecus itself is a, a group of species and separate genus. And within this genus, multiple species are there. 
and which species led into evolution of Homo habilis that we didn't know and here the mystery is during the Homo habilis time there were other species were also survived is this Ashlopithecians gave into habilis or gave into other species and who were the actual ancestors of Homo habilis and remaining species and at the same time of Homo erectus Homo habilis were survived if that could be true then these Homo habilis never be the ancestor species of Homo erectus when these two species are living side by side we could not say that the habilis will be uh, habilis would be the forefather or ancestor of Homo erectus so that means this linear evolution is always wrong the same species with a different time period modifying into new species and finally came into homo sapiens is completely wrong so this we are believing even today this is absolutely wrong then what type of evolution we underwent so we went into the evolution rather than linear we gone into branched evolution so branched evolution so the tree like evolution tree branches how the tree branches were there each branch represent different kind of genus one genus split into multiple genus from which new genuses emerge so in this way the final branch of human tree is homo sapiens so now you can see that so this is actual representation gave by charles darwin so charles darwin in 1915 uh, 1859 he told us that so human evolution never be a linear one it is a branched one so now you can see that so this is one of the branch here here somewhere else dryopithecus genus survived so dryopithecus genus survived so uh, seven million years ago these dryopithecus genus split into two genus one is so chimpanzee and bonobo so chimpanzee and bonobo another one is hominin genus so within the hominin genus how do we identify a particular fossil belongs to hominin genus so they must be bipedal and they have reduced teeth size and they have increased brain size so these are all some characteristics to identify whether a fossil is hominin fossil or not so the story is not yet end so when it comes to the this branch splitting of the species into chimpanzee bonobos one branch and another branch is hominin branch within the hominin branch all of the sudden human homo genus is not yet came into being so by the time of six million years ago these hominin branch the first saw the splitting of species into rd pithecus group or else we can say rd pithecus genus so what are all the species in the rd pithecus genus that we are going to discuss the next branch and we don't know exactly what species gave rise this rd pithecus group and what species could rose into the next branch of human evolutionary tree that is called australopithecian genus so in australopithecian genus so we had excavated nearly six fossils and out of the six fossils which one gave rise into the other branch that is called paranthropus branch so this is called paranthropus branch so which one is the splitting species between australopithecians and paranthropus uh, branch that we don't know exactly and when it comes to the these ancestor species which gave rise paranthropus australopithecian and finally homo genus or homo branch in this homo branch till now we excavated more than uh, 15 yabo fossils 
so this is the branched evolution it's not the linear evolution homo habilis is the ancestor species of homo erectus homo erectus is not the ancestor species of uh, this kind of homo neanderthals and homo neanderthals never be ancestral species of homo sapiens then who were our ancestors who were the ancestor species of homo sapiens who were the ancestor species of neanderthals that had to be ascertained so there were more unknown fossils we have to be discover those unknown fossils we have to apply new technique and methodology while studying the paleontology so till now in study of the how we came into known this linear evolution so this linear evolution belief which was prevailed till mid of 20th century till mid of the 20th century on the basis of archaeological evidences so archaeological evidences the kind of tools they were used and they left with us so that kind of archaeological evidences and uh, description and analysis of fossil remains fossil remains in the form of cranial post cranial features now so new methodology that is molecular genetics came into being so before applying molecular genetics based on the cranial capacity so based on the archaeological evidences what we thought was the neanderthals actually given rise into homo sapiens but this molecular genetics after analyzing homo sapiens genes and neanderthal genes they said that they were completely distinct species even they had intermixing also that means neanderthal never disappear by rose into homo sapiens they were lived side by side and they mate together that indicates that neanderthal is not our ancestor species then who were our ancestor species that means applying this new technique of molecular genetics or studying of ancient fossil dna which give us to resolve some missing links of our evolutionary process and this is the first part so first part of this discussion is we never went underwent into linear evolution we went into in branched evolution which was proposed by charles darwin that is absolutely right and till now we came to know that how many genus are there in our hominin evolution means so these are all the genus the first genus is nothing but ardipithecus genus so before on that dryopithecus genus so dryopithecus genus 2 ardipithecus genus came into being another branch is australopithecus genus another branch is paranthropus genus and finally it is homo genus so here you should remember what are all the fossils for our exam point of view mostly we focus on homo genus australopithecus genus and this kind of paranthropus genus this was recent in addition since last uh, 25 30 years the new fossils excavation that led to the formation of new branch that's why we need to update our paleont paleontological or paleoanthropology syllabus by adding this branch also so i am going to tell what are all the fossil man in each genus when it comes to the ardipithecus genus the different fossils are different species are you can see ororin two genesis and second one is ardipithecus remidas and third one is ardipithecus kadamba and fourth one is sahelanthropus chadensis these are all the four fossils within ardipithecus group are four distinct species now my question is out of this four which one is evolved into next branch can anybody tell us this one we need to wait further research and new technique and we need to wait uh, this kind of research to be published so this is the missing link next one so anyhow one of the fossil 
one of the species they gave rise into the Australopithecian group. So in Australopithecian group, so we had nearly uh, six. So uh, uh, there are five. The first one is Australopithecian anamensis, Australopithecians afarensis, Australopithecians africanus, Australopithecians uh, garhi, Australopithecians sediba. These are all the distinct fossils or distinct species which are present within the same genus Australopithecus. And another opposite branch of this one. So later sometime new branch came into being that is called Paranthropus branch. That Paranthropus branch has Paranthropus aethiopicus, Paranthropus boisi, Paranthropus robustus. So this is this generally we call as gracile form this we call as a robust form and when it comes to the homogeneous so which fossil is it africanus sediba garhi anamensis or any paranthropus fossil which one led to the evolution of homo that we don't know the common ancestor of these australopithecians and homo habilis that we need to ascertain we have to discover those things and within the homo genus you found you you will find multiple species and the only one species surviving even today that is called homo sapiens sapiens the first one is the first species till now we believed that that is homo habilis and at the same time of homo habilis surviving on the earth there is another homo species that is called homo rudolfensis and at the same time of this Rudolfensis and Eblis, there was a Homo naledi. Now, which one out of these three gave rise into Erectus? We don't know. Simply in linear evolution, we thought that Eblis gave rise into the Erectus. But in reality, at the contemporaries, there are so many. And Homo Erectus also lived side by side of Homo Eblis. And so Homo Erectus time, there is a uh, later time emergence of Homo neanderthalensis and at the same time of Homo neanderthalensis there is a another human fossil called Homo heidelbergensis and which one is it heidelbergensis the ancestor of Homo sapiens is it neanderthalensis the ancestor of Homo sapiens and our genetic evidence are showing different story and now it comes to the recently in 2003 they discovered Hobbit man from Flor Island in Indonesia. That name is called Homo floricensis. And recently in 2019, there was another fossil, another species among Homo genus found that is called Denisovan. And finally, Homo sapien. Today we are leaving Homo sapien. So what happened to all these homo species? Why did they extend? So which one is ancestor of homo sapiens? Which was the, their ancestor? So this is the way we have to track down all evolutionary questions that we are all calling as missing links in human evolution process. So now I am sharing this uh, entire human evolutionary tree into our telegram channel. So there you can learn all this one. Thereby you could avoid easily the story of human evolution. So now you got it right. How many most important human fossils are present in Homo genus? These are all the so Homo related fossils. These are all the Australopithecian related fossils. These are all the Paranthropus related fossils. These are all the Ardipithecus fossils. And we will leastly bothered about Dryopithecus fossils because they were me medium apes. And they evolved from the monkeys and they were le uh, medium apes. Mo uh, monkeys were less, lesser, smaller in size and uh, Dryopithecus were medium in size. And when it comes to the these bonobos as well as chimpanzees that we call as a great apes. So this is all about for today. Now you can see that some concluding marks. The story of human evolution is not neat and linear progress. But what it is? So the human evolution is family tree with, with complex branches that branches extended different millennium of time under different continents. 
so why different continents homo erectus evolved in africa but neanderthals evolved completely in distinct place in europe understand denisovians they evolved in completely distinct area, uh, area that is southeast asia as well as siberia kind of thing that means our tree extended with different continents it is not happened in the same place though initially humans might originate in africa but later species of homo with uh, it, uh, homo genus they evolved in distinct millennium distant time period with distant continents so that is one more thing so what made our tree changing every time means discovering new fossils made us changing this branches and reconstructing that tree so why many species within the same genus would end means here you can see that the adoption and survival so whatever better adapted for changed environment conditions so they would survive more so whatever the uh, species who could not adapt uh, very well for the changed climate that we call as natural selection they might be extinct so these adoption survival extension which drive the dynamism of human evolution so on based on this can we believe that homo sapiens would be continue forever on the earth i don't think so the evolution is ongoing process and it is forever and there is no species will continue without splitting that is the general rule of evolution or else organic evolution so this is for all about today tomorrow we will come with another topic thank you very much